When we think of propaganda posters, often we think of World War II posters or parks posters like this Yellowstone National Park. We might look at wildlife posters. There's lots of different types of propaganda posters. There's even different ones like Chinese, North Korean, different propaganda posters from all over the world. NASA's even got into the game. They've got these beautiful propaganda posters as well. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own propaganda poster. And in this case, it's a technical walkthrough for complete beginners. So if you're a little intimidated to try to create a poster that looks spectacular, well, you're in the right place. Let's jump in. Okay, so just like a cooking show, before we can start making the poster and cook the meal, we have to get the groceries. So I'm on a site called SVGSILH. It's one of my favorite sites. Everything here is Creative Commons CC0, which is public domain. I've typed in the word hero, and now I can scroll through and I can grab some items. So I'm going to grab this star. That's one of my utilities I'm going to be, going to be using. I've also got a male here. He's got a sword as well. I'm going to be grabbing a wrench. I'm going to be grabbing uh, pliers. I'm going to be grabbing a toilet plunger. And then I've also got, I went and searched for Wikimedia United States flag. This is public domain. This is from Wikimedia Commons. I'm going to grab this item as well. And I'm also going to grab the flag of the United States. Now you don't have to, but if you want to make your poster look vintage, then you may want to use a vintage poster background. And there's a great site called TomChalky.com where you can grab a free bundle on that website and it includes a lot of old vintage papers just like this. So I'm going to use one of these as well in my design. Okay, so I'm in Affinity Photo. I'm going to go File and New, and I'm going to create a document that is 11 inches by 17 inches. So you've got some options here at the top. What I would suggest is you can just go over here to the right, and it says Document Units. Just go to Inches, and then for Page Width, I'm just going to type in 11, and for Page Height, I'm going to type in 7, 17. And then you can select Orientation. I'm going to use a Portrait Orientation. And then from there, I'm going to click Create. Okay, and now I've got my palette set up. That's 11 inches by 17 inches. So now I'm going to just insert my first item. I'm going to go File, Place, and now I'll select my first item. I think I'm actually going to start off with this man, and I'm going to select that, and then I'm just going to drag it to place him somewhere here in the image. Now I'm going to be monkeying around with this, but I can at least get started here. I can put that right there. From here, I'm going to actually use the eraser tool, and I'm going to actually erase the sword. Now if you don't rasterize the layer, this little assistant will come up and it'll say, hey, I'm rasterizing the layer. It just means it's changing it into a true photo, a true picture, image file, and that's very helpful because now you can actually delete it. So I'm going to go clicky-click there. I'm going to delete that out. Okay, so now I'm going to add what he's holding, and I'm going to go File and Place, and he's going to hold a plunger. So I'm going to double-click the plunger. I'm just going to drag it. I can make it larger or smaller. I'm just going to make it larger here to start, and then I can move it around, and then I can also drag it to make it smaller. So I can kind of play around with it here, make sure it's the right size. I can also rotate using that little white button there at the top, so I can have the plunger now look pretty decent. So I'm going to have it, see if it covers like that, people won't know what it is. So although that's how he'd probably naturally hold it, I'm going to have it kind of look like that. Okay, I'm also going to add in the vintage layer in the background. So I'm going to click over on the right-hand side, add a pixel layer, and then I'm going to go File and Place. And then I'm going to grab my old paper there, and I'm just going to drag this to make it the whole size of the image. And then I can just maybe center it if I want, which looks good. Now I'm just going to move this layer underneath so that we can see now there's the background on it. Okay, it's starting to come into focus here. Now I'm going to grab the stars. I'm going to go File and Place. I'm going to grab my star, and I'm going to make it about that big. And then this is kind of neat. I'm going to drag it down, and then I'm going to duplicate it. So you can right-click, and you can copy, and then right-click, and then paste. That's one option. See, now I've got two. You can also just click Control-C and Control-V. That just duplicates one as well. You can also go over to the right-hand side. You can right-click the layer, and you can click Duplicate. That's another option. So there's many different ways you can do it. I'm just going to do one more here. I'm a Shortcuts guy. So we can see there there's these guides that are set up, which is really handy, so that you can have all five now sitting there. And this one I'm going to make sure is centered. You can see that guide that just showed up. And then this one here, I'm just going to make sure that it's somewhat consistent. And again, you could open up a, gr a grid if you wanted. You could go View, and then you could say Show Rulers. 
So now these rulers are along the top and the left hand side. And then you can also go show grid as well. Now the grid's going to be hard to see a little bit because of the paper, but that's okay. We can zoom in. I'm going to go zoom and I'm going to zoom in to say 400%, which is like way too much. 100% is actually pretty decent. And I can see now there's the grids in between each of the stars. So I could make sure that they're exact if that's what I wanted. So I've got five stars now. Looks good. I'm going to go view and I'm going to zoom. So it says zoom to width. And now I can see that's the bottom of my layer there. Okay, I'm going to add another layer right on top of the old paper, but underneath the stars. So when I do that now, I'm going to actually draw a shape. So there's a little shapes button here, a rectangle button. I'm going to go rectangle and then I'm going to actually draw right there and I'm going to move this up a tiny bit so that it's somewhat centered. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit and now I'm going to put my text at the top. So over on the left hand side, there's artistic text tool. I'm going to click it and then I'm going to drag just to start the process and I'm going to write plumber and then I'm going to hit control A and now I'm going to select my font that I want. Now there's a lot of different fonts you can pick and one of them is mesmerize and that's an older style font which I really enjoy using. So there's mesmerize there. I'm just going to double click it and I'm going to show you there's also you can do italicized and bold. I'm actually going to make this a bit larger and I'm going to put it right there. Now typically on a propaganda poster there's text at the top and then there's text at the bottom. So I'm actually going to move this guy up a tiny bit. And I'm going to move this up as well. And now I'm going to put the flag in behind. So I'm going to go file and place and I'm going to pick my US flag circle as my image. I'm going to drag it, make it nice and big like that. I'm going to put it right behind him, kind of like a sunset almost. And I really like these guides in Affinity Photo. See that red horizontal line? It's right there, right at his waist. When I move it, it actually pops up to show me that it's somewhat centered on the image, which is great. So that looks really good there. And you can make this, of course, bigger if you want. You can scroll this out and then you can just remove it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So underneath now, this is where the funny part comes in because if I'm making a poster for plumbers, I'd want to make them feel special. So I'm going to write thank you for your service. Actually, that's too many. That's too big for a poster. So I'm going to just say thank you. And that's going to be one line. And then I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So I will make it like that. And then I will go bold and italicize it. And then I'm going to draw another line here and it's going to say for your service. Now again, you can always play around with the fonts. I just don't like how that white is sitting like that. So I'm going to move this up a tiny bit. So again, a lot of this is just playing around. Tiny little adjustments in your design. I'm actually using the down arrow key to move this ever so slightly. Another thing you could do is you could change up the colors. You could make this black, this shape. So I'm just going to double click on the actual shape here, layer, and the shape will come up. And then from here, I can pick the color right at the top. See, there's a white color there. It says solid. Well, I could actually change that and make it black if I wanted as well. So I'm actually going to make it gray just for now. Okay, so I'm trying something different here. I'm going to change up the color of the stars down below. So I'm going to select the first star and go to layer invert. And then I'm going to select the next star, go layer invert. And I'm just going to go through and just invert all these to white. And then the actual text, I'm just going to double click that, control A. And I'm going to change this, the uh, color of that text to white. The actual rectangle, I'm actually going to change that now to black. So now when I zoom out, we can see it says thank you, but it's black text and then white is underneath. I think that looks pretty good. It's kind of zingy there at the bottom. You could do the same thing for construction workers, teachers, that kind of thing. So this makes a great gift if somebody is a plumber, for example, and they want to feel special. And it's also kind of a tongue in cheek gift. Like we know they're not soldiers, right? But hey, they do important work too. So I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Very easy just going to remove the grid there. Show grid. I'll turn that off. Very easy vintage looking poster. Took me about 10 minutes to make it. And I make these all the time. They're really neat birthday gifts too for friends and family or for clients if they want to pay you. But they make them, you know, you make them feel special because you're making them like a superhero, which is great. Thanks a lot for watching. I'd love to hear your comments down below. If you have a suggestion for a future video, throw it down there. And if you have something to add as well, a comment, a question, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching.